to infinity and beyond. So you think you're a 90s fan? Oh my god, I'm totally bugging. Okay, Hootie, can you handle this? It's I Love the 90s, and this is 1995. <laughs> the Flex. Nothing's free in Waterworld. The fashions. The trends. <laughs> the tubes. <laughs> the TV. MTV Sports. A totally awesome year that gave us these burning questions. What the hell kind of party are these kids through? It wasn't so much a party as it was a terrible, terrible story about dead parents. Don't say that. Yeah. Why don't those chat rooms come with spell check? Kind of ruins it when you tell some woman you want to show her your big fat clock. The answers to those questions plus the downside to heroin chic. Oh, oh, that's the way we're supposed to look. Cut to me with an eating disorder for three years. Eight. Let's be honest. Eight years. Man, the year of the blowfish. Not only was this uh, Hootie and the Blowfish's biggest year, it was their only year. Because you love the 90s. Because you still cry like a wussy when you watch Babe. La la la. Admit it. This is 1995. What's up? You have selected. I To infinity and beyond. Ah, uh, Toy Story's a really cute movie. I love that movie. Toy Story, that was just a fun movie. One of the first uh, memorable CGI movies that took you to the next level. Hey, Ham, look, I'm Picasso. And you were just sitting the whole time going, wow, wow, it's blowing your mind. Okay, everybody, coast is clear. A boy's toys come to life, and immediately there's a rivalry between Woody the Cowboy, Tom Hanks' character. Draw! Go! And the new toy, which is Tim Allen's Buzz Lightyear. I am Buzz Lightyear. I come in peace. This is a film that, for the first time, captures the extraordinary tension that exists between cowboys and astronauts. These are plastic. He can't fly. I think Woody has a good heart, but I think he's a little self absorbed yes i can you can 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 how many astronauts have to die at the hands of cowboys before we finally address this problem you don't think i meant to knock buzz out the window do you potato head? that's mr potato head to you you backstabbing murderer i believe i can fly buzz lightyear thought he was like a normal space man you didn't know that he was mass produced buzz lightyear available at all al's toy bound outlets in the tri-county area <laughs> Then there's this very creepy, almost too dark for a kid's movie, Neighbor. You mean that happy child? That ain't no happy child. He tortures toys just for fun. Who's the kid next door? Sid the sadist? The kid next door took him home and he was going to blow him up. Play nice. <laughs> but Woody saved the day. <laughs> They started as enemies and jealous of each other, but eventually they became friends. Good message for the children. Thanks. I love 95. The best. Party five, I was addicted. Five kids who have been orphaned by the death of their parents. As the executor of the estate, Mr. Graham worked so that I'm the legal guardian. There was a good cry moment every episode. <laughs> It wasn't so much a party as it was a, a terrible, terrible story about dead parents. Lacey Chabert's character was consistently annoying. Don't say that. Long live the Nev Campbell. You want to kiss me? Yeah, Julia, let beauty be thy name. I really miss you, Bay. And there's Bailey. Bailey was especially hot. Are you serious? Because he was just uh, so cute and he had that awesome Jeep that he drove around. Scott Wolf's got the dimples. And then again, so does Matthew Fox. Yes, but yeah. My favorite character, the baby. I love the baby. Didn't get enough play. He tackled lots of different issues on it. Son of a bitch! Scott Wolf's character became an alcoholic. Drink some whiskey drink, drink some up drink. You've got like four examples of me drinking too much. Like that proves anything. They went through the whole change of personality, and then he was denying that anything was wrong. I want to help you. 
because I love you. Nev was just very melodramatic about everything. I am too young to have a baby. When Julia got pregnant, I was I was very concerned for her because it was a time when a girl needs a mother to talk to. And she didn't have one. Her mother died. <laughs> It was a pretty heavy show. Kind of made me want to kill myself, actually, if you want to know the truth. They were experiencing so much angst. I just hope somebody remembered to feed the baby. Big Big. Gangsta's Paradise with Coolio. Now, that was incredible. Gangsta's Paradise off that Dangerous Mind soundtrack. That record was huge. Uh, Coolio very cleverly changed the lyrics from uh, Stevie Wonder's Pastime Paradise to Gangsta Paradise. I remember Michelle Pfeiffer in the video. She sits right in front of Coolio, she turns her chair around, she goes, You want to tell me what this is all about? Tell me what's going on. Or something like that. It's like, oh my God, <laughs> what are you doing? My man LV singing a hook. Big fat guy. He looked like the wind. You know, he had that profile with the big cheeks and the... We're barely even most alive. Look, next time you see that, think of the, you know, the old drawings of the wind going. I guess they front. That's why I know my life is out of luck, fool. What's up with the hair, though, dude? Coolio had the insane, you know what I mean? It was like, you remember that look. It's like your antennae. You know what I mean? If it's dark, you know, Coolio, where you at? Me and, that's how me and Coolio connect. What's up, though? You good. Anybody in a time of straight up gangster rap who can bring the fun and not be afraid to bring the fun can hang out at my lunch table. The bomb. Hi, Elizabeth Brennan from New Jersey writes, thank you for creating Snapple. Is there a Mr. Snapple somewhere? Wendy, oh my God, it's the Snapple lady. This beverage came on like crazy. Snapple during this time was like off the chain. Out of nowhere, poof, from the gods, there's Snapple. When did a Snapple lady uh, made me really love fruit juice again? She wasn't no actress or nothing. She was just a real lady who worked for Snapple. We got um, a brand new ad agency and they came up with the concept of me doing the letters. I love your all natural beverages. Do you allow people to toy your plants? Okay. Make them the best stuff on earth. I liked it because it was made from the best stuff on earth, but they wouldn't say what it was. What do you mean, stuff? <laughs> what does that mean, stuff? Sorry. This is going to sound really stupid, but the kids that I thought were cool drinking Snapple, they would always shake it like this. Like, that added the cool factor to me. Like, you, it's like... I'm drinking Snapple. Dear Snapple lady, good luck in whatever you're doing now. Love, Brian. I love 95. Coming up, the big lie behind Babe and the pet pig industry. You get to the store and you're like, how about that pig? And then you pick them out and they're like, this one's not talking. Plus, Hugh Grant proves he's no sissy. I think it was quite nice because it dispelled the rumor of Hugh Grant's kind of loveliness, you know. That kind of, oh, excuse me, I was terribly sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. I, I was wondering if you possibly s my for $40. Next, on I Love the 90s, 1995. But first, log on to vh1.com. Get artist info, play fun games, browse photo galleries, purchase CDs and DVDs. And while you're there, Cyber Geek, tell us how you really feel on our message boards. <laughs> Songs of 95. Now, it's 1995, okay? Have I here with your ultra bumping, grinding, slamming, jamming, baby, grooving power? Dance hits of okay? 1995. Break it down. Everlasting Love by Gloria Estefan. Totally equipped. Of the heart, top of my heart, by Nikki French. And finally, this is how we do it. 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 
by Montel George. You can't touch this. The dance of 95 straight butter, baby. Okay. Nothing's free in Waterworld. Where do we start about Waterworld? Kevin Costner was like, it'll be dances with jet skis. I've never seen so many great jet ski jumps. We love swimming and we love Kevin Costner. It's a recipe for success as it's far true. as I'm concerned. In the beginning, sweeping music, grand titles, an epic shot, and Kevin Costner drinking his own piss. Baby. Say he's thirsty. You just a little wee, you wee in a cup. You put it through the machine. You crank it out. Kool Aid. <sighs> Whatever flavor you want. The basic plot was the world is now full of mostly water. Kevin Costner's all fishy. He's got gills. Gills. This little girl had a map to dry land on her back. What are the marks on her back? We'll say it's the way to dry land. We're living on the Dennis Hopper with the one eye. It does look like Dennis Hopper is the villain. He's got his big mean warship and he's trying to get the girl so he can go see dry land. We'll just stand there, kill something. And the kid was waving and he slapped the kid on the head and said, What are you thinking? What are you thinking about? I remember I laughed about five minutes. What are you thinking about? Night swimming. And then at the end, what do they find? They find some land. News break. The actor Hugh Grant has been arrested in Los Angeles and charged with lewd conduct after allegedly picking up a prostitute. Ah, the Hugh Grant and a hooker thing. Divine Brown. Hot off of uh, four weddings and a funeral. And you have to pay for sex. You're just not going in the right places. Really, I was just reveling in the moment. <laughs> Hugh, what were you thinking? What were you thinking of? I think it was pretty obvious what he was thinking. Why are people so shocked when, when guys want to have sex? I think it was quite nice because it dispelled the rumor of Hugh Grant's kind of loveliness. You know, that kind of, oh, excuse me, I'm most terribly sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. I, I was wondering if you possibly s my for $40. Why would you Grant go with Divine Brown when he's got Elizabeth Hurley? Come on. You got Elizabeth Hurley. At home, divine Elizabeth. Divine Elizabeth. She didn't look like the kind of person who you go, huh? I'm gonna jeopardize my career for her. Never met a girl like you before. I remember when everyone saw the mug shot of Divine Brown, and we all thought he's been at it with a man. How fabulous! He said, eh, "I'm gonna go on Leno tonight," and he was, he was honest. He said, "Ah." Eh, I screwed up. Please forgive me. He's the only guy who can appear charming when he's talking about being with a prostitute. He has that gift. And then the guy kept his career because he said, I'm sorry. Fantastic. The fact that it didn't hurt his career is proof that Americans don't care as long as you've got an accent. I'm, you know, really pleased and I feel very, very um, smug. <laughs> Loser. Chief, you are going to love this. These are the red and yellow M&Ms. They were way cooler than the Mighty Morphin Power Rangers, cooler than Smurfs. They're both so wonderful and so distinct. It's hard for me to pick one over the other. See? They love you. Both of you. The M&Ms totally have personalities. I just felt sorry for them every time someone would take a bite of one of them. Oh my God, why do they have to take it there? What are you doing? What? You're eating M&Ms. Yeah, so are you. Well, I'm not an M&M. There's a certain amount of guilt associated with that, I think, as the consumer. You felt like, well, am I eating a little dude? You know, is this little guy here, you know, I'm, like, ending his life? If you don't eat your own kind, it's unnatural. Yeah, give me the food. Oh, crispy. I smell sex and candy. There is something definitely about the green M&M, which happens to be a girl. Hey, guys, I think that really worked out. Uh, sure. Yeah, I remember. Growing up, the green ones were supposed to make you really horny. Do the green ones make me horny? So horny. 
I didn't know that. For real? For real. Yeah, baby. Can I get some green M&M's then? I wouldn't have been able to tell the difference because I was always on it. Hey, she laughed. I love 95. You better work. In the mid-90s, the chicest thing is to be in the terminal stages of drug addiction. Heroin chic was all about sort of the waif, gaunt, bloodless, sallow, dying look. I love a girl who when she eats a sandwich, you can see it. That's sexy. You can actually see the sandwich in her belly. You know what? I can't even lie. I was totally into it. I thought that it was cool. I actually used to put Vaseline on my cheeks and the black eyeliner on. It's not cool to have dark circles under your eyes. Let me live with that. Let me live with being pasty and having dark circles under my eyes. Or like this. It was kind of a creepy phase. I don't eat at all. I take heroin and smoke and just put my little A cups in your face. The funny thing is, when I inject myself with heroin, my clothes look cooler. They look like they're dying in Vanity Fair. And then you're like, oh, oh, that's the way we're supposed to look. Cut to me with an eating disorder for three years. Eight. Let's be honest. Eight years. The bomb. Very big fan of TLC. TLC is my girls. They're from Atlanta. It's a sexy pool. I wore that album out. I was obsessed with that album. My favorite song was Creep. So I creep. And I just keep putting it down. That album was like a complete overhaul for the whole group. They came back and their bodies were ripped. Plus, Chili is fine as a m Boy. Ooh, who's tapping that ass right now? They were like slender, sneaker, sophisticated. They were really, really hot. From when they first came out being, you know, the little candy kids to being very mature, sexy, beautiful women who had something to say. TLC, what does it stand for? I don't tend to love and care, I, I think, is it? <laughs> Terry, Lisa, and... Cora. TLC, as we know, stands for T is T Boss, L is Left Eye, C is Chip. I asked them what it stands for. They said, "Well, we're the endless crew. They're very good trio, and very cute, and one of them's an arsonist. Whatever." The roof is on fire. Left Eye burnt the house down. The roof is on fire. Yeah, that just takes balls. Andre Rising is the nicest dude in the world. Better man than me. We've all done things when we were in a peak that we regretted. Never any intention to hurt anyone. That's why we have insurance. That's why we have insurance. So that when our crazy girlfriend burns down our house, we build a new one. And these girls are like, you have to understand her anger. What? I don't understand that shit. You burnt my shit down. F that. Understand this, this big pillowcase full of bricks upside your head. Understand that. I love 95. Coming up, for the last time, it's not Hootie. People probably call him, hey, Hootie, all the time. He probably just looks at them and says, Plus, the wonderful world of chat rooms. If you were an electrical engineer looking to get laid, there was a chat room for you. And Brittany Murphy's porker past. Brittany Murphy looks a smidge different now. She's lost mm, a smidge weight. Next on I Love the 90s, 1995. But first, Dirty Alternative Rocker of 95. Liz Fair here bringing you the Dirty Alternative Rockers of 1995. Gavin Rossdale, the dirty but pretty rocker. Scott Weiland, the dirty stone rocker. And Billy Joe Armstrong, the dirty sort of punk rocker. Those are the fucking run guys of 1995, a vintage year. <laughs> is awesome. Teen movie for the 90s. Hello, there was a stop sign. I totally paused. And it really is a culturally defining movie. People say this in Chick Flick, not true. Clueless is a great movie. It's one of the funniest movies in the 90s. It I, can, will, I yeah, will say that. It can be enjoyed by either women or gay men. 
Clueless was about this girl in high school who was totally loaded. God, you say that it's a bad thing. Alicia Silverstone did a great job. Uh, she looked the part. She talked the part. Mr. Hall, I was surfing the Crimson Wave. I had to haul ass to the ladies. There were a lot of catchphrases in, in Clueless. Your as ifs. As if. Your whatever. 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 Alicia's like, you know, she's not that all that. She's a Monet. What's a Monet? It's like the painting, see? From far away, it's okay, but up close, it's a big old mess. Brittany Murphy looks a smidge different now. <laughs> she's lost mm, a smidge of weight. Talk about your Hollywood makeovers. <laughs> Project. Miss Brittany Murphy was the dumpy, sad, fat friend. I've got an idea. Let's do a makeover. <gasps> no. I think she must have stolen a lock of Alicia Silverstone's hair and done a voodoo ceremony because she stole her career. I think one of the funniest moments from that movie is when Cher goes to take her driver's test. And she runs into the car. She sideswipes it. She goes, oh, oh should, should I, I leave, leave a note? note? Her stepbrother is Paul Rudd, who is kind of priggish. I have so need lessons from you on how to be cool. Tell me that part about Kenny G again. And he was the love interest for Alicia Silverstone. I love Josh. She uh, ends up with her stepbrother. I was always a little bothered by that. <laughs> you like Marsha and Greg getting together. It's kind of icky. Very incestuous, but he was cute, so who cared? <laughs> oh my God, I'm totally bugging. Big pig. I've been married a long time ago. Where did you come from? Where did you go? Where did you come from? Cotton Eye Joe. And it had like a dance beat to it. And the, the fiddles, they're like. What the f am I listening to? Where did you come from? Where did you go? Cotton Eye Joe. And this made me want to just brew up some moonshine and start jigging. Like I see people with missing teeth. Long, smelly hair, and somebody that's about to have a baby and doesn't know who the dad is. See, I'm from Canada. You have to remember that. So during this time, I'm I'm looking at the TV going, is that what they're like there? And my parents would say, no, Michael, not all Americans are like that. Just most of them. Where did you come from, Cotton I do? Just pissed off all of America right there. I love 95. Xena and Hercules. Xena and Hercules, um, huge hits. Hercules and Xena were a terrific counterintuitive couple. She was really sort of the strong, menacing one, and he was surprisingly docile. They were sort of the Liza and David of syndicated superheroes. That was the year of Kevin Sorbo. I'm Hercules. Lucy Lawless. What a great name, Lucy Lawless. Tell him Xena says hello. Xena was about this warrior. She could just break you like a wishbone with her legs. A lot of intense acting on that show. Whoa! Just relax, Xena. Go take a hot tub. Her character was so masculine, and she was so beautiful that she kind of had like this lipstick lesbian following. Despite my appearances, I wouldn't know that Xena had a gay following. There's an X in her name. That marks the spot. It's hard to be alone. You're not alone. I especially love that crazy kicking sound that she made. Poor girl having to yell like that. And someone said, that's great. Let's put that in every show. Hercules. Hello. Oh, what a pretty face that man had. Mr. Sorbo is like the modern-day Hercules, and the, the Hercules that's not all jacked up on steroids. He was too small. No. Xena had more muscles than him. No! Between Xena and Hercules, boy, who could take who? That'd be an interesting fight to see. Everybody knows the woman's tougher, man. Come on. You picked the wrong woman to get rough with. They should have had a battle. Pay-per-view. Xena against Hercules. It's not easy to kill. Buzzkill. In 1995, tattoos and piercings were all the craze. I got all my tattoos in 1995, actually. I went nuts. It was one of those things where it was like Saturday night, nothing to do. Should we get tattoos? But you can't overdo it. You can begin to look like a coloring book. If you were a girl, of course, you did the requisite lower back.
tattoo, you know, or you did the lower ankle. If you get a tattoo on your breast, like like a rose, what happens when you, when you get older? I mean, it's gonna sag, so will the rose wilt? I always wanted to get a barcode tattooed on my ass just to see how much it was worth. <laughs> and then with the piercings too, I mean, you know, Madonna got her nose pierced. And I just think that would be uncomfortable. Give it away, give it away, give it away. Everyone had their tongue pierced. Like, the checkout lady at Walmart had, like, both nipples and God knows what else pierced. But people started piercing places that nobody had thought to pierce before. The labial folds. Who would have thought? Somebody did. The clitoris for the female, that's got to hurt, right? As a girl, I don't even understand wanting to pierce down there. And that just confuses me. I mean, it's pleasure, right? Not pain. Yeah! I wouldn't put anything through my penis either. How do you get your testicles pierced? Like, like, are you? Do you have genes that you just wear your testicles out? Like, who's gonna see that? The Prince Alberts, the PAs, as they're called, right through the. No way in hell. Ugh, creeps me out. No! I love ninety-five. I like coming up. Braveheart goes commando. The primary historical lesson that I learned from this film is that Scottish people don't wear underwear. And I think that's true to this day. Talk to Sean Connery. I'm not wearing panties. And have you been playing PlayStation or are you just glad to see me? If beer came out of that thing, I would never leave the house. You know what I mean? If there was like a little sexual hole on the side of the Sony PlayStation, that's it. I'm done. Next on My Love of the 90s, 1995. But first, Hotties of 95. Hi, I'm Michael Bolton, here to lovingly and tenderly bring you the Hotties of 1995. Shirley Manson, stupid girl hottie. Holly Robinson, hanging with Mr. Cooper hottie. And Gabrielle Reese, love to be spiked by that hottie. That's a volleyball term. The hotties of 1995. Exercise caution. They may be just a little too hot. Jay and Silent Bob rename your favorite TV show. Hello out there in TV land. It's the coolest f***ing cats on the planet. Jay and Silent Bob. And we're renaming your favorite TV show of 1995. If you don't like it, eat a Five whiny bitches that complain about how their parents got killed in an accident. You're f nuts. There's no f party lamer than that one. You f Go cry, bitch. Damn. All right, there, douchebag. See you in '96. Loved the pig. <laughs> Remember the little mice? They do the little break thing. Yes, yeah, pig. Didn't they say like, "Baby, I'll be back again"? Oh, it's in the house, very big house in the country. Babe is the story of the little pig that could. The pig needed to prove that it was more than just bacon. Then he talks. Pigs are definitely stupid. <clears throat> no, we're not. Good heavens. Yes, I believe pigs talk. Secretly, behind our backs. Oh, it's kind of like Charlotte's Web. Whoa, whoa. Except in Charlotte's Web, the pig dies, and in Babe, the pig herds sheep. Move along there, you big buttheads! <laughs> he was like bound and determined to learn how to herd sheep. I was just trying to be a sheep dog. It's a movie all about trying to be what you're not. I just asked him nicely, could you please move over here? Thanks very much. It was very kind. A pleasure. I don't know how. Millions of piglets did not become pets for kids after that movie. You get to the store and you're like, how about that pig? And then you pick them out and they're like, you're supposed to stop talking. That'll do, pig. That'll do, pig. That'll do. That'll do, pig. Don't we all want to hear that? That'll do, Rach. That'll do. They eat pigs? Uh, be talking to you and stuff like that and then you gotta eat it? I don't think so. He's gonna grow up to be a big fat Pig! Babe grows big. Babe's not fun anymore. Babe's not even cute anymore. Boom, Babe's breakfast. Oh, beautifully done. And at the end of the movie, 
It wins a, uh, a herding competition against all the other dogs. I really feel at the end of the movie that the farmer did not give him enough props. That'll do, Pig. It's not just that'll do, Pig. It's that's awesome. If it hadn't won, a little apple in the mouth. We'll stick. Hey, babe, what's for dinner? Babe. I love 95. Sony PlayStation, greatest gaming device ever invented. Of course I had a PlayStation. I'm a guy. The PlayStation somehow became the drug user's video game system. Up, down, up, down, right, right, left, right, right. The controllers have like 24 buttons on them. Right, right, jump, 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 jump. And they're not lettered. They're shaped. So now it's like a test for autism. Triangle square, triangle square. I'm going to have a lawsuit against Sony PlayStation. Pretty much nine years of my life has been dedicated to that stupid machine. Welcome to John Madden football. John Madden, that's where it's at. Madden was the game. Everybody had Madden. You know, I think PlayStation might be responsible for about half the country's dropouts. And it's good. Damn you, John Madden. Tekken, um, Tomb Raider. Oh, man. When I played Tomb Raider for the first time and the lions jumped out, you're like, oh, you're like, it's like living in a television. If beer came out of that thing, I would never leave the house. You know what I mean? If there was like a little sexual hole on the side of the Sony PlayStation, that's it. I'm done. I have lost so many nights playing Sony PlayStation. I think I've... I spent two days and I probably slept maybe three hours playing Resident Evil. I have carpal tunnel, tendonitis. Look at these hands. They used to be straight. Thanks, Sony. <laughs> Slamming. Chat rules with a bomb. That is early internet right there. Wow. The chat room was a great place for people with similar interests to get together. These internet chat rooms are places where one can go and really express oneself. Where do I go to be real perverted? I liked a lot of different uh, chat rooms. Uh, yeah. You were an M2M, uh, Men Seeking Men, Latino. Any hot chicks in here? Turns out there's a lot of creeps on the internet. That's what I got from it. I'm 19 and horny! Exclamation point, exclamation point, exclamation point. If you were an electrical engineer looking to get laid, there was a chat room for you. When I meet somebody and they say they're met on the internet, I smile, I say, great. If you were a Shoshone Indian looking to get laid, there was a chat room for you. It created a new kind of poetry. It elevated the discourse. I was like, I'm naked, what do you want to do? I'm like, let's just talk. It's like, <laughs> even in cyberspace, I get the girl that wants to cuddle. Chicks suck. LOL. And then you realize they can't spell. You better know how to spell, you know? It kind of ruins it when you tell some woman you want to show her your big fat clock. Cyber sex is just uh, a new level of beating off. It's phone sex, but even more sad. One hand on the keyboard and one hand working it. You know, getting aroused and not knowing. I mean, you know, but you don't definitely know that on the other end is a, is a bald, fat, middle-aged guy. I love 95. And welcome to the first extreme game. I love the X Games. It's like the Olympics are for a geriatric generation now compared to the X Games. Just they blow everything else away. The X Games played a big part in the 90s of getting these kind of underground extreme sports out into the mainstream. The X Games was all about that sort of evil Knievel side of sports. Not your average spin around the block on your bike. It's actually quite popular now to the point where the athletes want to get paid. <laughs> Silly you, you're not getting paid. They'd have like a guy jumping out of a plane with a snowboard on and like a paintball gun. Oh. She might be 
dead. Coming up tonight on the X Games, some guy with an earring through his tongue is going to be doing the half pipe on a skateboard, whatever the hell that means. And the X Games is just one example of how the 90s just marketed the letter X. Everything had to be so extreme and like fluorescent. Extreme deodorant, extreme shoes, extreme car. MTV totally just stole the X Games and added Dan Cortez and therefore made MTV Sports. MTV Sports! MTV Sports came on like a flash. Everybody was watching the show. Dan Cortez had people doing crazy things. Dan was the man, ladies' man, good-looking dude, you know, host of MTV Sports. Love Dan the man. Dan the man, Cortez. There he is with his headband on, all cool, and you know, hey, 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 real gung-ho. I was a little hot about that Dan Cortez guy with the bandana. Even though the bandana's out of style, it's cool when I wear it. Every time I would turn on that show, I wanted to see Dan do something. He wouldn't do anything. Hey, this thing isn't going to fall, is it? No. All he did was wrap stuff around. Hey, that was great. Check this out. Show's over. I can't do it. Thanks, Dan, you bastard. Buzzkill. That was a big year for us, for me. Not only was this uh, Hootie and the Goldfish's biggest year, it was their only year. And I don't believe in Everybody on Earth Listen to Hootie and the Bloodfish. You gotta love Hootie, right? I thought that was like college preppy boy band <laughs> with a black guy as a lead singer who sounded like a white boy. Frat guys and girls loved this album. With a little love, with a little love, and some tenderness, all around the world, all above the mountains. Hold my hand, come on, hold my hand. Hold my hand, the most ever played song currently. Of the 90s, most ever played song of the 90s, unquestionable. The yeah, there was definitely booty overkill. That was a big one. Only want to be with you was big. I only want to be with you. I only want to be with you. I said I was going to write the cheesiest lyrics I could write. And I fought to keep it off the record, and uh, I was wrong. Yeah, everybody thought he was Hootie. <laughs> Starious, Rucker, you know. People probably call him, hey, Hootie, all the time. And he probably just looks at them and says, You're Hootie. And you will always be Hootie. Be careful what we wish for, Hootie and the Blowfish. My name's Darius Brew. Shut up, Hootie. You're always gonna be Hootie. It used to bother me, but uh, you know, it doesn't bother. When they stop calling me anything, that's gonna suck. So it doesn't bother me anymore. I love 95. Coming up, just what were the British doing to make Mel Gibson scream like that? Scraping, uh, chiseling. They were juggling the testicles. I don't know what they were doing. All I know is that Mel yelled. Braveheart, next on I Love the 90s, 1995. But first, Greg Ferguson, uncut and uncensored. Ah, oh, babe. It wasn't the same pig, you know, it was like 16 pigs because the pig kept growing up. Actually, that's not, that's what they said. The truth was the film was made by Australians and the pig was just too damn delicious. They couldn't, at the end of the day's film, and they were like, Jeez, uh, that pig was pretty good to die, wasn't it, mate? Yeah, it was kind of nice as well, didn't it, mate? I'm kind of hungry, mate. It's been a long day. That would go nice with this beer. A little bit of pig. All right, who ate the f***ing pig? <laughs> Braveheart, a bunch of Scottish men in, in kilts fighting for freedom. It's the ultimate guy flick, but it's weird because it's mostly about men in skirts. Mel Gibson, he's got this beautiful long hair and it looks like he's just put that VO5 hot oil on it. There was a love story, you know, who cares, um, but you gotta put it in. I love you, always have. I want to marry you. In the movie, he killed his wife. And that pissed him off. And and after that, it was like, okay, hey, they just took away my, my reason for living. We're about to raise some hell up in this piece. The best thing about Braveheart was the authenticity of the violence in the battleground. You saw somebody's arms completely like, Oh, 
guess it would have sucked to live back then. You connect with movies, different people, different ways. I connect with Braveheart when all the English people are slow. I thought, oh, I don't know what it is. Everybody saw Braveheart and thought, wow, this is really violent. Now we know Mel was just warming up. And there's a character named Longshanks. I'll watch anything with a guy named Longshanks in it. Trouble with Scotland is that it's full of Scots. I like the mad Irishman. That's my friend, Irishman. And the answer to your question is yes. You fight for me, you get to kill the English. Excellent! In the big scene, he's sort of got the NFL football colors painted on his face. And he's <laughs> exhorting the men to battle. What are you supposed to do before you fight? You turn around and you moon. I like big butts and I cannot lie. The primary historical lesson that I learned from this film is that Scottish people don't wear underwear. And I think that's true to this day. Talk to Sean Connery. I'm not wearing panties. But they may take our life, but they'll never take our freedom! They can take our lives, but I can't take our freedom! He had this notion of freedom, because that's basically all he ever said, ever, you know? And he yelled it. What happened to William Wallace at the end, basically, right? They caught him, they tortured him. What exactly, precisely, were they doing to him? They shish kebab him. Scraping, uh, you know, chiseling, juggling the testicles. I don't know what they were doing. All I know is that Mel yelled. But you know what? He was a brave heart. You understand? He died for what he believed in. That's why it was called Brave Heart. Not too many people know that. Final thought. As you've seen, in 1995, we entered a new era of creative expression. And boy, did we get crazy. Hootie and the Blowfish, chat rooms, heroin chic, and the Rachel Dew were all the rage. 1995 taught us to go extreme, and if all else fails, nothing screams pay attention to me like a belly chain or tribal tattoo. So remember to take care of yourselves, your piercings, and each other. I love 95.